at spirituality from a intellectual experiential point of view and the mask the feminine is looking at spirituality from a experiential um ex i don't know what the word is but a release point of view they're looking for release of, of emotional release point of view whereas the masculine is trying to understand make sense of but most of it is it's just hand-me-downs and very few people look for evidence themselves unless they really are learned and look for those quantum physicists that have brought proof that no matter actually exists and and the great philosophers that have given the deductive reasoning that everything exists in consciousness and nothing creates consciousness but exists purely as an expression of their art. Very little is actually understood properly. So at some stage comes that exp at, at that understanding, I'm creating this, I'm doing this to myself. And that's why law of attraction becomes misappropriated as a way to make themselves happier, richer, more prosperous. We need to get to that point where we realize when we finally start to dissolve our beliefs that we are the victims of this world, that we're not good enough, not clever enough, not pretty enough, not intelligent enough, or whatever enough, when we finally get rid of that, that the world isn't against us, life isn't against us, life isn't permanently throwing obstacles in our way, but we're creating it with every thought we accept that the dreaming mind is broadcasting, because we don't have a single thought. The, broadcast, the, the dreaming mind is constantly broadcasting the erroneous perception that life is suffering and you meant to. When you buy into the broadcast and you make those broadcasts your own, therefore you buy into it, you make it a belief. You make it your own belief. The minute you believe in it, you resonate with it. The minute you resonate with it, it comes at you like a freight train. And so when you realize those thoughts that you're having about unworthiness, lack, not good enough, and that the world's out to get you are not your thoughts. So do not buy into them. Ignore them. Forgive them. Ignore them. Forgive them. Return to silent stillness and give gratitude. And in your gratitude, gratitude begets gratitude. And what does that mean? Gratitude brings forth the experience of more to be grateful for. And when you do that, you start to align with the flow of life. And what is the flow of life? It's the flow of what you are. When you move into flow, you move into alignment. Nothing to give up, nothing to surrender. Because you're not giving anything up. There's nothing to give up. Except the idea that there's something to give up. That's the only thing you give up. You give up the idea of sacrifice. As Jesus once said, I seek mercy, not sacrifice. And when you move into flow, which is love, love is flow. It's what you are. You're the constant flow of light. You're the constant flow of God's love. The extension thereof. Extension is flow. And when you realize you are flow, you realize your essential nature, your true primordial essence energy is pure flow, and you align with that, life flows. But now be careful of this life flows. Don't start throwing fantasies into your flow, because the flow will stop very quickly. When you're in flow and you start behaving, and you, because you've now gone beyond belief and you realize there's flow, therefore beliefs are gone, knowing is there. That life is, and everything is always working out for your highest good, which it is because the highest good is ultimately the full awakening to self. And so every obstacle to peace is actually a wonderful opportunity to practice forgiveness, recognize self, remember self, know self, know God. That's what the Holy Spirit is doing is turning every obstacle to peace into an opportunity, mirror, mirror on the wall, what's reality and what's not at all. That's it. So when we start behaving, that the script is as if the script is already over. We've already awoken in the kingdom. We are the extension of God. We are where there's no way where God ends and we begin because we are the extension, the sun extension of God. And everything is in flow and everything is working for us to recognize that, know that, be that knowingly. Well, that's what happens. Why? Because we are incredibly powerful manifestors. As I've said before, you've manifested the whole fucking universe. What else do you want to manifest?
You want to stop man festing, maybe woman festing for a while. But hang a fuck. Let's just skip the woman festing too. Let's just go straight to no festing. Let's just be and allow what is to flow. That's what surrender means. Allow. Get the fuck out the way. Get your thoughts out the way because they're not your thoughts anyway. Your engagement of thoughts, get them out the way. Never had a single thought. Not one. You've never thought anything. Yes, the Course says the only thought you have is the thought you have of God. Can you tell me what that is? No, you thought of love. You didn't think of love. You thought of lust. You know what love is. In this world, no one knows what love is. The closest we get to what love is, is just peace. Silent stillness, peace, abiding, gratitude. That's love. Unconditional acceptance of what is. That's love. That's the closest we all get while we characters in our dreaming mind. That's it. That's the closest you get. Anyone that claims anything else, I love you. You talk shit. You just want to get laid. You talk absolute bullshit. I love you. You just need something. That's what you need. Well, I love you. No, you don't. <laughs> Does it sound sarcastic? It is. Sarcasm is always the truth hidden there. When we accept that the entire dream world is designed by our dreaming mind, the ego, to be filled with constant obstacles to peace, the illusion of suffering. That's it. That's the script. That's why the Buddhists figured it out. All life is suffering. Make life easier. Don't get married. Live in a monastery. Shave your head. Someone else feeds you. Less obstacles. Less to work on. Less trying to make yourself happy is one thing. Trying to make the other half happy, forget it. So just abide. Meditate all day long. <laughs> but then they do say suffering can be overcome. Ignorance can be overcome. To overcome ignorance, you need to become dispassionate about the world. Dangerous. Don't become, don't force it. Don't try and detach. Everybody now has learned the detach word. What a load of absolute fucking bullshit. Do not detach. Your foot is sore. Your foot has cancer. Detach it. No, heal it. Go through the pain. Be non-attached to it. Non-attached to the outcome. Go for the treatment. It's going to hurt. Laser surgery, whatever the case may be. And a year or two later, your foot's healed. And now you can use it again, as opposed to hobbling around on a stump. No detachment. You can't detach from the world. People say detach because they hear it. Guruji so-and-so said detach. Shut the fuck up. You can't detach. Be non-attached. And what's non-attached? To outcomes. It's all of it is you. Embrace all of it. Accept all of it. Love all of it. 11 minutes at a time. But realize the interconnectedness with all of it and therefore the interdependence with all of it. And you know now, you now know, you're in the non-dualist. Outer world, inner reflection. Inner reflection, outer world. If it's toxic out there, something's wrong here. That's why I see sexy people everywhere. Intelligent, sexy people everywhere. When you start to recognize the essential nature, the essence, the flow, which is always just at peace, until you willingly want to share it, and then it extends, and there's the joy, the infinite likeness of being, and as it extends, it lightens, and as it lightens, it extends. Closest I understand love to be, the sharing. Here I'm doing it right now. What am I sharing? my understanding from my direct experience. If I was to explain the core essence of it to you, like you connected to one of those monitors lying in a hospital bed and it's beep, beep, beep at life. Suffer, sad, suffer, sad, 
happy, unhappy, happy, unhappy. The essence is be die to self, awake to reality. The essence, all pervading, lies there. Peaceful joy, silent still. an all-pervading awareness it's always there it's never not there you're always aware of the presence present moment awareness here now always it's never not there and the beauty of it no matter what comes and goes that doesn't change and therefore knowing that that is what you are It's always peaceful. And so what I'm talking about here is when it becomes a knowing, not an understanding, beyond understanding, a knowing, because you're having the direct experience thereof. And the shit hits the fan as it always does. And nothing affects that present moment awareness. Nothing. Yeah, sometimes you act. Sometimes you have to growl. Sometimes you smile. But it doesn't change the knowing and doesn't change the essence. Doesn't affect it. Doesn't keep you up at night. Doesn't trigger you. Then you realize how the dreaming mind, our dreaming mind, falling asleep, when fear entered it, how it imagined dragons, imagined this nightmare. And you're now seeing through it. You're recognizing what those that came before us, the Jesus, the Buddha, the Ramana, what they understood, what they had a direct experience there of. Each one in their own individual way. No right and wrong. Each one a part of the big puzzle. Each one leaving clues behind for the rest of us that are on the same inward direction path, the path without distance, the journey without distance, for us to figure it. We're Because why? We're fractures of one indivisible self leaving each other, what ourselves, clues to awaken to ourselves. So when we become non-attached to the outcome or anyone else, not detached, non-attached, yet, as I said, interconnected and knowing that we're interconnected, then you realize it's playing out. There's a script playing out. I'm a character on a stage. I'm going to play that character to the best of my ability. Sometimes I'm the king. Sometimes I'm the cowboy. And sometimes I'm not the goodie. Sometimes I'm the baddie. Sometimes the Wi-Fi works. Sometimes it doesn't. I'm not going to change me. I'm going to affect me. I'm just going to be true to the all-pervading awareness I am. That I've always been. That deep within me, I've always known I am even though at the, there may have been many a year where I didn't recognize it. And when this becomes our natural state of being, we start seeing through the veil. The story starts to make sense. You realize how everything is always playing out for our highest collective good. And what's our highest collective good? For the end of the story, for the punchline, where we finally start to laugh and recognize the joke of our so-called creation our manifestation of this dream universe. You start to realize our own self-imposed veil of forgetfulness, which is layered upon layered upon layered of obstacles to peace, ideas, and suffering, which, what does it do? It takes our attention away. It's like this pain in the body. <laughs> the minute you focus on it, it takes your attention away from presence. When you stay present, it might be pain, but it no longer suffers the pain. There may have been trauma in your youth. If you give it attention and you stay there in the past, there's suffering. And then you live with it now, you bring it into the present moment and you project it forward. And then there's the fear of it happening again, reoccurring or losing it in the future. Fear of the future. Past, sin. Now you're guilty and then you project fear into the future. 
But when you start to realize that all-pervading presence is there and nothing shifts it, of course, some are going to say it's the presence of the angels, the presence of the Jesus, the Ramana. No, it's your true nature. It's your Holy Spirit. And when you start to see it, you start to gain this complete and total clarity, total certainty, total conviction. You stop denying your earthly experiences. There's no point in denying it. You know what triggers you. You look at it, you head on, you face it head on with the practice of forgiveness. Because forgiveness brings an understanding. I've done this to myself and it starts to reinforce. Everything you forgive starts to reinforce. I've done this to myself. I've done this to myself. I've done this to myself. I can see peace instead of this. I've done this to myself. I can see peace instead of this. I am spirit. I am free. I've done this to myself. I can see peace instead of this. I am spirit. I am free. Forever innocent. Untainted. Unsoiled. Forever innocent, forever the joyous likeness of being as God created me to be. And it's no longer guess or regurgitate some book. And yes, as all the so-called teachers awaken to self, they all start sounding the same. No matter what school, they came from Advaita or Christianity or Buddhism or Taoism or whatever -ism, they start to sound the same. Why? As you center on the hub, words, symbols twice removed become lacking. Concessions at best. Concessions for the true essence, the joyous lightness, the silent stillness. How do you explain silent stillness? You can't. You gotta have, you gotta be there. And you all get there. And then you start to see through the veil and you realize the alignment. Now it's perfectly scripted. And if there's a war, those experiencing the war, whether they be children and but there are victims or the perpetrators, they're experiencing whatever karmic imprint they've decided to. They have no need for it, but they've decided to have it. And who are you to fix it and change it? You have to allow it to play out the way it played out. Once upon a time, 25 lifetimes ago, you were in a war too. And now you're transcending wars. Are you watching it on television, but it's no longer for you? Does it mean that you don't act if you see a child suffering or an animal suffering or whatever suffering and you can help? No, you step up. You pour yourself in. But if you're watching it on television, it's triggering you. It's because there's a war inside you and you're unwilling to let it go and you're unwilling to recognize it's within you. So you need a television so you can talk about it and feel the empathy and feel the suffering and feel the sadness and trap yourself in that shit because you need attention. Whenever you suffer, whenever you cry, whenever you tell your fucking story about how you suffered and how the world's a shit place, attention seeking. And while now we know you're either sharing love or looking for it. And attention seeking is looking for it. And then what do you want to do? You want to tell your story to everybody else, get them to empathize, and you want to drag them down into your story. And that's what people do. No, thanks. No, 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 no. I hear you. I love you. Rise above the battlefield, which means stop telling stories. Who's telling the story? Who's expecting to suffer? Do you really want to transcend it? Stop talking about it. Share your lightness. Share your beingness. Share your joy. Not your shit. Not your illusionary shit. Your reality. Joyous lightness of being. Realize the whole universe, if you, if you, even if you're a materialist, believe in the material universe, it's still one you organ, organism. The whole thing is one. Get rid of certain species of fish or insect or, or bird and half the planet comes to screaming off. All of it's interconnected. Every planet, every moon, the distance thereof, the moons around the, the, the earth, earth around the sun, get rid of one planet and, and the whole thing falls, falls to shit. It's all perfectly designed by a, a great intelligence. And that intelligence is yourself. God didn't design the universe. He didn't even think of taking one little sniff at it. And God isn't a being. He's just pure energy extending light. And one little light particle imagined this whole fucking disaster. All of it. One, you, one little light particle. You, me, all of us. Remember, what we're trying to do, maximize pleasure, minimize pain. Never face reality. Why? Because it means the death of little self. And we're not only afraid of dying, 
We're afraid of never of existing as these little sexy beasts at all. No story, no past life, no spirit world, no coming back, no fixing it, no orgasm. No ice cream. That's what we fear. Never having existed as individual separate little fuckers running around causing havoc. Loving Jesus. When we finally, you really want to stop suffering. When we finally So when we finally stop believing ourselves as bodies, which means not only stop believing we're a body, but our savior is a body, whether it still walks around and talks or died many years ago. And therefore God isn't a body either, unless we call it one unified body of light. But no bodies. And, there's n and what's unique in individuals is exactly what's not true. And what we all share, the essence, life force, the I amness, that's what's real. So the whole universe is one organism. We're one indivisible cell. One. One dreamer. When we accept what is playing out is just part of a script and we look at it from the end of the script, like the end of the movie, replaying it. We've been there many a time now, watching the movie over and over again. There's no Jesus sitting next to you. There's no hand. There's no projection. There's no popcorn. There's no projectionist. You are the the whole movie is being projected through you. The light that projects onto the screen is the light with which you see. The whole movie is in your head. And it's just light flowing, but you put filters in and it appears like characters moving on the screen. Get rid of the filters. There's just light. Look around you. There's no cinema. You're the whole thing. You're the light. God is the light with which you see. When you start accept the script as is, for your highest good, as a collective awakening. And you're realizing you're watching it from the end. It's already over. The highest good is we awaken to the joyous lightness of being we are as the extension of God's light, of God's love. What's love? Peaceful joy. That's it. And therefore you stop desiring anything to make you happy because you realize nothing that you wanted, which you wanted to make you happy. You don't need it anymore because the essence of what you are is happy. And guess what happens now? All else gets given you. Why? Because now you start to pour your joyous lightness, your joyous happiness out into the world. And what happens when you pour joy? You come from a place of gratitude. And gratitude does what? Begets gratitude. So you get more to be grateful for. You're not looking for anything. You're sharing all of you. And it all comes. The joyous lightness of being is an abundant state. An abundant state is not money. It's an abundance energy state. And then the money comes nevertheless. You'll notice that at worst case scenario, you always have enough. You'll always have enough. Always. There's always enough. And you're never happy with enough. You want more. So when you stop believing in the guru, the saint, the, the Jesus separate character, and you realize the essence of those that you love, Ramana, the Jesus, the Buddha, whatever, the essence of what they are is you. Shared essence, shared self. One indivisible shared essence self. And that shared essence self is the same essence self shared with God. Nothing external to save you. You are that. You are the light that saves the world. Saves Puts it away out of your imagination and just be the light. And know this. Trust me. I'm a spiritual teacher. It comes with complete conviction, total clarity, total knowing. No matter what anyone says, irrelevant. When you know, you know. That's a fact. When you know, you know. How do you know? You know. How do you explain? You know. You don't have to. You'll want to. You want to share it with others. But you don't need a soapbox. They'll come to you. Then there's those like me who need to write. Writing. I don't write to make people happy. I write because it is my happiness. I'm happy when I'm writing. Why? Because I'm abiding in my present moment awareness with myself, with my Lord God of my being. It is my joy to write, to contemplate, to allow thoughts to come and go 
and then follow a thought stream. That's what contemplation is. And when I've recognized with sufficient clarity, wrong-minded thought, right-minded one thought, which is peaceful joy. And then the contemplation of peaceful joy applied to the erroneous perception of wrong-mindedness and how to clear it. And that's what contemplation is. And you're basically like a, a like a rug cleaning a window. You're just cleaning it. You're just cleaning it. And you're getting rid of all the mud until it's crystal clear. The awakening to self is, like I said, it's not, yay, I could be so happy. It's just, beep, beep. It's, it's almost a non-event. Drinking a cup of coffee is more exciting. It's just so gentle. But there's a clarity about it and knowing that's unwavering. It's not a blissful experience. And all of a sudden, everything just, wah, and the ego mind just goes quiet. It does for a little while. And then you pour back in. The constant chattering, yak, 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 is like a distant radio. It doesn't stop. It won't stop until you put your body down. Don't expect it to stop. It won't stop. And you know what happens when you expect something. Expectation's the mother of all. Don't say fuck up, Slu. That's it. <laughs> There's no excitement. But there is a joy that flows out of you when you want to share it. There's a smile. I always used to say, I don't smile because only stupid people and crazy people smile all the time. Go to Looney House. People always smiling. I catch myself in the mirror. Often now I'm smiling. What the fuck? Yeah. There's a new state of being. Awakening to self, enlightenment, such a heavy word. It's just a gentle breeze, gentle. It's the knowing, complete certainty I am. I'm this, I dreamt all of this. And I'm now unseeing it, I'm cleaning it. I don't even have to tell anyone, I have to share it just by being present in my dream as a character, both the dreamer and the character. I'm clearing it by being present. Forgive, forgive, forgive. I'm sharing my lightness of being, no matter where I go. And sometimes I even have to fire someone. That's part of the play. No longer getting guilty. Yeah, they're not meant to be here. Uh, get rid of that. Let them go off and find a better position for themselves. They're misbehaving anyway. And you realize the voice for God which is your own inner voice, which is the memory of what you are. The memory of God is the memory of what you are. What you are is the extension of God, and therefore the memory of what you are is the memory of you and God as one indivisible beingness. That's it. And the yak, yak, yak comes. No, thanks. You don't have to keep doing the self-inquiry. You really realize what self is and who's inquiring. And yes, you just forgive them. But when you realize you don't even have to forgive it anymore because it's all you, then, then it becomes, I wouldn't say as much as so far as to say it's fun, but it's almost non-eventful. It is non-eventful. It's light now. However, chattering doesn't stop. And it'll catch you when you're tired, when you're irritated by something, traffic. The old things that used to irritate you start to come back up. And that's why you need to remain vigilant. You have to remain vigilant. Because she wants to come back and yak, 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 and pull you into it, tempt you into it. So you have to be vigilant that nothing disturbs your awareness including the cats growling at each other. And realize that your one shared self is everyone. The face of Christ is the essence of everyone. 
And how can that not be pulling you back into alignment? How can it not be pulling you towards remembering your highest self, the essential nature of what you are? If that's where you're putting your attention, and yes, attention means you're still in dream state, without any intention, because intention creates tension later on. You're going into alignment. You're letting go. You're practicing forgiveness. You're practicing vigilance. You're offering gratitude because it begets more. How can the dream state not become the new world? How can you not become, gradually become that which you've always been, the happy dreamer? Awakening to self, no dreamer. Infinite lightness of being. Why does suffering seem to intensify as we get older? Because most people do spirituality as a part-time affair. They do spirituality when they've lost their lover. You see, they come and go. As soon as they get their lover, they disappear. You don't see them for a while. Then they break up and they come back. More meditation classes, more non-duality classes. The Lonely Hearts Club. If you truly want the peace of God, you need to want it completely above all else. Seek ye first the kingdom completely, totally, and all else will be given you. Why? Because to have is to share, and you'll have it to share it. This was incredibly angry to the point of vengefulness, to the point of Dexter in Africa. A psychic serial killer, can you imagine? Because it was hurt, because it was wounded, because it it felt betrayed, abandoned, rejected. Angry with skills. Taken 16. I could never have imagined that life would be so effortless. And no matter what comes my way, I don't see it as suffering anymore. It's just clearing, clearing, clearing. No more detachment, non-attachment, no expectation, being present. It's the opposite of expectation, presence. It's the opposite of suffering, presence. It's the opposite of love. Love has no opposite. I hope this has brought clarity. We'll stop now and do question and answers. Thanks for joining me. Be here, be present, be grateful, be vigilant, be yourself knowingly. Thanks for joining me.